series. This is take two. For some reason, the last session dropped out. So I hope you, hope you can pick us up on the next um, part of the feed. So the seven topics we'll be talking about are travel, style, motivation and mindset, fitness and movement, health with a focus on gut and menopause, because I know that affects a lot of us women in our prime in this community. Um, and of course, country community. And that's where the lovely Maz comes in today. There'll be 30 minute sessions every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 12 p.m. or tech permitting. Um, and if you wanna see the recording, uh, it will stay in the feed, but I'll also put um, a copy over on our YouTube channel, Sequence and Sand on YouTube, and then also in the blog. So you'll have ways to catch up on the recordings if you can't make the actual lives on the day. So don't worry, we've got you covered. So without any further ado, hopefully the tech lasts. I want to introduce to you our very first guest, Maz Saunders. For some, she'll be familiar to you. For others, she's a new face. But I know by the end of this session, you will love her. Maz um, is joining us via Zoom onto Facebook because her internet has been so crappy that Zoom was the best way to even see her. And so far, so good third time round. Um, Maz is in a tiny town in outback New South Wales called Corinda. And Corinda, just to put it on the map for you, is about 600 kilometres northwest of Sydney. And if you drew a line across from Corinda to the coast, you'd end up just south of Coffs Harbour. So that's roughly where she sits. And I've got the big nod, so that's good to know that that's, that's right geographically. So if you've got the visual, that's where Maz is sitting in her lounge room right now. Um, I, When I was putting this series together and first started thinking about um, country community, I immediately went to Maz and because to me, when we talk about strengthening community, which is so much top of mind for us now here in the city or wherever you are in this nation. Nobody does it better than country people. And um, I've got tingles saying that because it's so true. Country people know they live isolated day to day and they know how to come together and support each other. So I thought, let's get the beautiful Maz on and she can tell us how they do it in Corinda. Um, Maz, just a little bit of background about her. She has been a country girl all her life. Um, grew up in uh, around the Broken Hill area, I think, mainly. Um, she has been married to Pete for about 34 years. That in itself is um, a major achievement. Well done, guys. And they, uh, Pete's been managing this massive um, cropping cotton and stock property in near Corinda for the last 11 years. So for in those 34 years, they've had, what did you say, Maz? 10 towns, 15 moves, countless renovations, four kids who are now <clears throat> older and are producing children of their own. So they have three beautiful <laughs> grandchildren and another one on the way in July. Um, I am thrilled to say that after six years of horrendous drought, the drought's not broken officially because there's still properties in the area suffering. We don't hear much about the drought because there's been other catastrophes going on as well. But um, there's been some rain in Corinda. We're going to put a crop in this year for the first time in about six years, hopefully. Cross everything, girls, everything, everything. So that is some wonderful sunshine in this gloom. So, um, and Maz will um, also has an Instagram page called Maz Lifestyle and a blog. And she's also on Facebook as Marion Saunders. So I'll put those links to all of Maz where you can connect with Maz after the session um, in the comments area on the Facebook live feed. So country people who know community best, let's, um, let's ma let Maz take the reins now and I'm gonna shut up for a bit. How are you going Maz? I'm going really well. I'm going real. I'm just glad we've got our technical issues sorted out. And behind the scenes, you've got no idea what I've just had to do to get this up and running. So I'm feeling pretty good that I got us up and running. But well no, thank you for asking me. Thank you for asking me. And thank you, everybody who's been patient in the background, sticking with us for our third take. So that's great. Um, Maz, when we 
try and define what a strong community looks like, what does it mean to you? Um, a strong community where I'm from and what I've always known is being inclusive. It's being inclusive with everybody that's within your community. Uh, you might like them, you might be someone you go out for dinner with, but you've got to include them. Um, and because, you know, you see the same people day in, you go to the shops, you see the same people, you go to the doctors, you see the same people. So, yeah, you've got to really be inclusive and just leave any opinions or ideas at the front gate and just be, learn to get along because life's hard if you don't. Yeah, 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 very good point. Um, um, but also wanting the best for your community too. You, you've got to have, um, you know, like the, oh, what was the word I was going to say? Um, you know, you want, you want to live in a community that's strong and it's got a good backbone and has values and you want it to move forward. And you can tell the difference when you drive through a town that doesn't have any community pride or community spirit. You can tell it as soon as you drive through. Um, and Corinda, it might be 30 people on a good day live in town, but it's a fantastic little community, as you've known, you've been here. Um, and it's got great heart and we only want the best for our little town. So what, what makes Corinda so special then, Maz? Why, why has Corinda, because you've been through some horrible stuff together and there's all been all levels of, I'm sure, suffering on different, you know, in different ways. How is Corinda different to other towns that you've experienced or know of? I think back again, it's the inclusiveness. I've lived in like a lot of towns, like as I said, what, 10? And a lot of them have been country towns and we lived at the Gold Coast for four or five years. But um, I think what makes Corinda special is the people that live in it have all got the same values. We all are inclusive. We all want the best for the town. We all, we all enjoy each other's company because at the end of the day, We've all got to live with each other here and you have to get along. And it's it's just things that we do within our community that make it special um, and pretty unique to us. Yeah, and I guess the people bring that that flavour themselves because they're each unique. So they have their own unique yeah. take on, on what's important yeah. to them. But as you say, there's things that bind you together. There's common values and yeah. common beliefs that, that bring you together. And what is there about 30 people? How many people live? I think on a good day you'll get 30 that live in town. Um, it did have a population in its boom day of up to about 160. But the way it is now with economic downturn and the way the farming industry is going, um, yeah, I think 30. And that's just long-term residents that are living there. We've had a few pass away last year. But um, yeah, 30 on a good day, but then you get people from the district outlying areas that come to town for certain events. Um, the town can swell to 100. Right. Um, we have our festival right. here every year, the David Bowie Festival, and we'll get uh, up, upwards to 600 people descending on our little village for, for the whole long weekend in October. So it's just amazing. And it's all the locals put that on. So, um, And that wouldn't happen unless everybody had a, a similar goal and want the best for their little town. Mm. That's a really good point. Having similar goals and wanting that for the town is because it does. It's a team effort. Uh, when we were speaking about what to talk about today and throwing some ideas around, um, there are a couple of themes that really bubbled to the surface for me. And one of them, which I never thought of, that you touched on time and time again, was this whole concept of taking the opportunity that presents itself now for us no matter where we're located. Um, mm. I, I, can you tell um, our audience a bit about that? Um, well, it's just like people are slowing down with this coronavirus. People have had to slow down their lives and stay at home more and be more reflective about their lives. And I'm sure a lot of people, even though the isolation part is hard because you can't catch up with family and friends and your lifestyle has changed, but if anything, I hope it brings people together to realise the importance of community and, and to see those little snippets of, um, of people helping each other and their neighbours maybe connecting that they've never spoken to for years. I mean, that's just the normal thing out here for us. Like, um, but I hope that it's not a wasted opportunity to build your community if you haven't already or to start to lay down the foundations if 
you want your community to be a little bit better after this and that you can rely on your neighbour or you can have something within your community. Take the opportunity now while it's presenting itself, while you've got the time, while you're at home. You know, contact a couple of friends in your neighbourhood or even friends that don't live in your neighbourhood that might want to be part of something special and, and just get together and throw some ideas around on how you could be inclusive with your community. Um, like, we're lucky because the same people turn up for meetings and everything here and we're a lot smaller, but it's just the fun you can have and and the the um, the friendships that you build within your community that just make living where you live so much more richer and special. So the point is, think now while you've got the space and time. Sure, it's it's unsettling and it's all very different, but think about what you want your community to look like. And if there's some sort yep. of change that you want to see happen in your community once lockdown is over and moving forward because things will never be the same again and now is the perfect opportunity to think about what you want and to create that future um i think that's exactly. a really powerful position to take on this that's very empowering you know uh, yeah that i think that's awesome and, so thank you and no 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 and and it doesn't have to be anything big like we're small out here like but we we've sort of had a few things that we wanted the community to be involved in so we had a community meeting in our local hall and we just put a flyer out in the mail so everybody got one in our area and it was when we were relaunching the newspaper that um, Loretta and I do now asking for people if um, they were interested and they wanted to relaunch it and so we had a meeting in the hall a lot of people came and said yeah great we'll do this we'll do that um, and anything we have in our district we generally have a community meeting people come we sit down discuss what you'd like to see happen in your community. It doesn't have to be on a grand scale. It can be just as, you know, we get 10 people and we think we're great. Like, <laughs> don't let the numbers, you know, stop you from trying. Um, 10 people's great. <laughs> but just people that want, want your community to be better after this. And it might just be a meet and greet or even just organising a craft morning in your local hall, um, which I think I put in my blog post. And they are fantastic ways to include the community. And you can get grants for that. Just I would actually say go to your local council because they often have a lot of grants for funding to be able to pay for teachers or courses and things like that. Um, and we have so much fun. And that's, that's what gets us through when we've got periods of isolation, when we're home doing, you know, the day-to-day -day things that we do on the farm. It gives us something to look forward to. It might be, you know, a month away or two months away. It's that little light that you sort of think oh another couple of months and I'm doing that and that'd be great and you know or a month we're going to be getting together and doing that in the hall and it's such a great thing for your mental health and also it makes you feel good when you're part of something that's a, an inclusive thing in your community yeah and that's bigger than you you know and I think too now with everybody working at home definitely um you can be organising that with emails and with phone calls and, you know, Zoom. God, I wish I had Zoom shares, you know, if, if you could get them. <laughs> um, but, yeah, those sorts of things you can be doing now and laying down the foundations and connecting with people um, yes. to do that. You don't have to physically do it. And when the doors are unlocked and you're unleashed, then you can, you know, arrange times and meet together. So... In my mind, it's kind of like a few different layers to this. You mentioned not to leave anybody out. That's really good. Yes. So that's at the individual level, regardless one on one. And it's a group level. We've got like, as you've yep. met, you've met our sewing group, and that's only ten ladies. There's only ten of us. Tell maybe... the sewing group story, Maz, because that is a great example of a group of women who have become great friends who are all very different over a period of time, because that's the other thing, this doesn't happen overnight, right? It's not like put out a couple of emails and all of a sudden mix it up, you've got a great community. Um, yeah, yeah. Tell us the sewing group story, because that's really powerful. Well, well, it was, a and like our age group in our sewing group, it's not just old people, like we've got young mums who are in their early 30s, even in their late 20s that come, they bring their children along and we meet at the hall once a month, our local hall. And even though it's a sewing group, some people bring, they might paint, they might knit, they might weave, they might, I've gone there one day and done book work. 
because it was just so exciting to do book work at sewing because there are other people around. It was great. <laughs> but you don't have to, it's, it's not just a sewing group, it's just, it's bigger and, you know, more inclusive than that. So we all get together and then um, on those days we'll, um, everyone brings something to share for lunch and we sit around so chat and it's such good for your mental health because some of these women don't get off the farm in a month and, you know, they're chafing at the bit once they get to sewing. It's like, Wah! <laughs> but, um, um, and a lot of ideas hatch from those days. Like we do a lot of fundraising for different charities um, and we have our big, uh, once a year, we sleep in the hall overnight and raise money for cancer. It's our spin on Relay for Life. We sew all night for 24 hours and it's so much fun. Um, but there's all these little things that we do which we love because as a group we have so much fun doing it, but it's also for the good cause. It's raising money for different charities or it might be benefiting our community. And the calendar stemmed from that one of those days. That's how the, the Beach to Bush calendar, that was just Tony one day at sewing, said, hey, we're going to do this fashion parade for Anita when she comes down to do the Panther Day. Why don't we do a calendar? Well, well. <laughs> the, rest of, the rest is history. But, um, but that's on a group level. And then you have the community level because you have your individual level like me being isolated. I just love my own company and never enough hours in the day for me. Then you have your group level, which I just spoke about, the sewing group. But then you have your community level, which is when if there's anything big on in town, like if we have um, car rallies, we get a lot of car rallies, variety car rallies come through for different causes. And they will stop in Corinda. Some stay overnight, so they have to be fed. So the community comes together. It might, might be people in our sewing group. It might be just Joe Blow up the road, but he'll come and cook the barbecue. Or um, mm -hmm. someone might make some slices and cakes or come and work for a couple of hours that we mightn't see for two months. It has nothing to do with the community, but they all come in and help mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they know that many, many hands make light work. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And I'm sure you've got heaps of other stories to tell, you know, with the oh. things you do and how you come together. That's really awesome. Um, what do you think, having lived a, quite an isolated life for quite some time, and yes, you connect in and have a great community, what do you think um, can be the most difficult things when you're living in isolation? And some of the things that you've seen work really well we've talked about the activities but what are some of the things to look for in people if they are struggling you know or are there some you know do you know what I'm trying to get at are there well, living, yeah, well living, living in isolation that's the beauty of our, our days and um, we ha also have clinic days every Tuesday which is um, run in our local police station and a lot of people go to clinics so Rachel who is our clinic sister um, you know, like can keep an eye on people that way. And and other things, like a lot of our elderly residents in town, like people will check on them or ring them. Yes. Um, and when we do our local paper, I, I'm forever ringing people, you know, weeks before. And I know I've got to put a whole day aside because when you ring someone, if they haven't spoken to someone for two weeks, you can't get off the phone. Like they're just chop, 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 chop. But... We are pretty good at tuning into if people are having a problem or need a hand or need a help. Um, it's just it's just how we roll out here in the bush. We we do keep an eye, and you know, someone will say, "Oh, have you seen such and such?" And they'll say, "No," and then someone will go and ring them, mm. or they'll say, "I saw such and such, and she didn't look that well," or I think you know she. Someone will ring her. Yeah, someone will pick up the phone. Just the old yep. Pick up the phone, you yep. know, take that action. Yeah. And, and it's the girl saying in a small community, everybody knows your business before you know yourself. And <laughs> you can't keep any secrets out here, I can tell you now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So there's fours and against that, I'm sure. There's some days where you probably want to go, I don't want anybody known by a business, but the pluses yep. are people have got you back. Yes, definitely. Especially where we are, it's... Um, it's, it's very special in that regard. Okay. So we've touched on a few things to do, and I know craft is a big part of what you do um, because that's an activity that you love. There's also cooking, you know, there's mm -hmm. some great things there that, um, and you share that, share what you make, and that's all part of the experience as well. Um, 
So it's about finding, I guess, your tribe and your group based on what you like to do um, and what interests you and those interests bring you together. And as you were talking about the sewing group, it, it made me think quite often that's just the medium that brings you together, but it's often um, the relationships then that last. That's just the reason for coming together. The but reason to come together is sewing, but it's so much bigger than that. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. sewing's just the excuse we tell our husbands that we're going to sewing, but when we get there, <laughs> like um, I remember sewing. I went to sewing one day and I didn't even unpack my machine. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, it, it's, and, and it's not to say that people can't replicate what we've got in, in a city or a suburb. It just means that you just have to take, just take that step, you know, what, what so, can go wrong if you can't. Yeah. So sorry, Maz, for cutting you off. Um, so we're living in a bit of overwhelm at the moment. How could you suggest a few ways to push through that and just, you know, get something going if people are interested in doing this in their community? I think um, get one or two friends or if you've got people you already know that are living in your suburb or your neighbourhood, maybe contact them, reach out and just say, hey, look, you know, once this is over, I really want to build or not build, but just make our community better, more inclusive, more um, a great idea I, that works for us out here. We're already great friends, but I'm, I was thinking how you could replicate it in the, the city is maybe put a flyer out once this is all over and just, you know, people that are interested in growing vegetables in your garden and then sharing it amongst your suburb. Um, you know, we do that out here and, like, it's so good because you're not putting all the same things in. Someone might grow broccoli, onions, carrots, but they it's all they grow. And then another person might do spinach, potatoes, or not potatoes, but pumpkins or something. Um, and then you've got this fantastic, you know, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, so, harvest, harvest of vegetables harvest. Uh, that you can share amongst, amongst the people that were were participating in it, and like that's a great way to start. Just a communal garden, but your garden you're using your own yard and share it. Or maybe you want to start a craft morning once a month in your local hall. Um, I thought of a great idea, especially in the city. There'd be so many older older people that have skills like crocheting and knitting that just sit at home. And how lovely would it be? if someone knew that they had that skill, to ask them and say, look, you know, would you be interested in coming and showing a few ladies how to crochet at the fall or something? And it stems from there. And then you might get four or five, then they tell four or five, then the next month you might get a few more. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just something that's bringing the community together, that's not costing you money, that's it's fun. You go home with something, it's getting your creative juices going, it's good for your mental health. And you're meeting new people. Meeting new people, yeah. As we were talking yesterday, I think in the city, um, certainly my experience, and I've moved around a lot too. You know, we've had 13 moves as a military family, living in lots of different places, but mainly around yeah. cities. I think it's that trust factor. You know, we, we're not used to letting our guards down so much and we, you know, we're isolated, sure, but in lots of ways we live in our own bubbles. You know, we don't reach out. Some don't reach out much at all. So... I think it's that kind of, well, how do we do start small, test with a small group and just build that trust and exactly. find our and, feet that way? Yeah, and it might even just be putting a flyer, like I know you can't physically put a flyer in a mailbox, but you can start the foundation now, work out what you'd like to say to people, put it in a format, um, ask other people, you know, what their suggestions might be and just put it out to the community once all this is over or even if, you can get to the post office and they can do a mail drop in your suburb or your neighbourhood or how many blocks of streets you want to go out and just say, look, you know, as a community, I would love to do something and just have a meet and greet or a meeting to find out how people feel and gauge their interest. If they're just happy to go along with their lives after this is finished and just keep going with the same crap and not talk to their neighbours. Um, but I'm sure they won't. I'm sure they'll, you'll get some interest and you'll get, it might, like I said, it doesn't, look at our sewing group, 10 people in the photo of my blog this morning, there's one photo right down the bottom. I think there was only nine of us in that photo. And 
what we've achieved and put on and done in just our area, um, I just feel so blessed to be part of it. And it's enriched my life on such a more meaningful, you know, level. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, um, with that calendar too, for those who don't know, um, as and the girls raised ten thousand dollars over ten thousand dollars doing that calendar that one initiative and uh you know that's just an incredible achievement um of one idea as you said it just grew and grew and then you did it grew oh, and grew and you did and it help. wouldn't have happened without your help either flying that supplying those gorgeous swim swimmers yeah, that's all right. But that, you know, I was that was a joy for me to do. But it, the whole experience and the fact that, you know, you hit such a great goal that you should all be really proud of that. And it's possible. It, it shows that you can do it. I um, think it's probably time to wrap up. There was a couple of questions in here and it's I'm just looking on the Facebook feed now. There was a question from Tasha that seems to have vanished now. I'm sorry, Tasha, I can't see it. But I think from memory when I glanced at it, it was about um, COVID-19 itself. Uh, what's happened in your community um, in terms of locking down for that? Have you had to change your lifestyle yeah. much? Is the threat I'll, I'll, there and what have been the advice? Well, we haven't had any cases. Our closest town is Walgett. Um, and as of, I think, yesterday, there hasn't been any cases in Walgett. Warren, which is further down the road, I think it has one or two cases. But life for us on farm hasn't changed because it's just Peter and I. And my girls, um, I've got Jazz and Katie, they live very close by. They don't have contact other than themselves. So I am still able to have contact with them because they're only 10 minutes away um, and they're not going anywhere. So they've been in lockdown. I get my groceries delivered by the mailman, right. which is once a week, right. once a fortnight. Um, I don't go anywhere unless it's a parts run, but my parts run consists of me pulling up, walking in, hi, they put it in the back of the car, I don't touch anything and I drive out. That's it. Don't go anywhere, mm -hmm. don't do anything. But we still, like... As a community, I still talk to my friends on the phone. We've just actually put the publication out of the paper and that was all done remotely. That was all done by email, phone calls. Um, and, yeah, that was easy. But I'm lucky. I, I can go quite a few weeks without. I just love my own company. I just do my own thing, have a lot of interests and um, Peter keeps me busy because every time I start, something, you know, he turned up here at five to 12 and walked in the back door and I said, get out. <laughs> I said, it was one o'clock and I went, no, 12, get out. <laughs> this is my space and my time and they're the ground oh. rules at home, you know, you've got to set those ground rules as well. Yeah. But in, in, the, in the spare room, you know, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and I put a note yeah. on the door saying filming in progress, don't don't enter. Yeah. So, yep. that. Well, thank you, but Matt. Like, every um, different for me. Yeah, every, every day. is different. You can never plan a day out here because one minute you think you're going to be home, next minute you're in a car driving to, to Moree on a six-hour round trip picking up a park. So I just, I go with the flow and I've learnt to not worry about things and just. Yeah. And that's a really great way to be any time, you know, in any situation. Um, mm. I think, um, I think that... Um, our time might be just about up. We it was hard to know because we started a little bit later, but um, mm. that has been such a lovely chat. I want to thank you for your time um, and your heart because you give so generously, Maz, and that's what you know. That's what comes across, and that's what makes it work for you and your community. So it's that reaching out and that generosity. So thank um, you. We are very lucky. We are very blessed to have you in our world. Maz has been involved with Cosy Confidence. We've connected on so many levels, but on a personal level, we've made a great friendship out of all this, like Maz was talking about earlier with the sewing group and I'm very, very grateful for that friendship. Um, Maz, is there anything you want to leave us with as some parting thoughts? Some top yeah. Tips? I just got three words. Um, just lives 
just live life slower, more simply, and it'll be a lot more satisfying. Slowly, simply, to be more satisfying. I love that. That's beautiful. Thanks so much, Maz. Girls, thanks for hanging in there with us with our couple of false starts. But hey, that's life. It's certainly life where Maz is from. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> we will no, check. You don't. <laughs> we will check your um, comments in Facebook because we've had to go via Zoom into Facebook Live. So a little bit different to how the others work. Um, and we will get back to you with any questions you have. And if you've got some questions afterwards when you've thought about what we've just spoken about, please um, do so in the comments and we'll be sure to get back to you. So tomorrow at 12 o'clock, we have a bit of a change of pace. We talk travel with the lovely Lee. Uh, Lee is from Hello Me and she has been traveling for a very long time. She puts some wonderful group travel together and individual travel and she knows her stuff and uh, another wonderful lady that I know you are going to just love. So that's tomorrow at 12 and then on Friday, which I know is Good Friday, but Friday um, at 12, because to me every day kind of melds into the next and you just manoeuvre around what you have to do. But Erica, Erica um, is another wonderful businesswoman that I've met through a business group that I attend regularly. And she is um, a yoga and movement specialist. So we will talk about kind movement. And I love that, but that's Erica's buzz. She does kind movement. So she'll be in on Friday at 12. So travel tomorrow at 12 and kind movement with Erica on Friday. Thanks again, Maz. Love you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. My we'll pleasure. Soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.